joining us for yoga today for my first Zoom class. Lisa's becoming an expert. Um, I have help from Lisa, who's doing, is the host and running all the technical uh, part of this portion of this. Thank you, Lisa, for the numerous hours she's put into making this happen. It's really incredible and it's, I, it's deeply appreciated. Also joining us, who you can't see, is Devin, who is going to be the model student of all. She's just going to do everything that she knows you are all doing. So she's channeling you. So when we do this class, I can see her because of the way we're set up. I can't see you, unfortunately. And so I guess I'm ready to begin. Uh, in terms of props that you'll need for this class, if you have a folding chair or a dining room chair, a chair is uh, an important part of the class. If you do not have a chair available, you can use blocks or a footstool, something like that. But I would be using a chair. And then a mat, obviously. Two blankets or the equivalent of two studio blankets, as you can see I have them here, and then a strap. And then once you get set up, please sit at the edge of your blanket so that your legs can fold easily. And then press your hands down into the blankets and lengthen up through the body using your arms as a post so that you almost lift your sit bones off the floor and then press the sit bones down to the floor. You keep the length of the spine, each just still having space and then release your hands, put your hands on, back onto your thighs. And then we'll take our hands into prayer pose with the heel of the hand coming to but the base of it, uh, the thumb coming to the sternum and lifting the sternum slightly with the intention of taking the next few exhales to land into the pose itself and feel the sit bones level front to back, side to side. Go ahead and exhale and then inhale do it three to five times. And then go ahead and release your hands to your knees. I wanted to give you a quote from Mr. Iyengar, Mr. BKS Iyengar, to help us uh, focus this morning. Yoga allows you to discover a sense of wholeness in your life where you do not fall into pieces with, or try to be pieces coming together, you're just one whole being. And that is the real intention of our class of yoga, most days, pretty much every day. So we'll work as, uh, with the intention of the wholeness of the physical body and our mind, our emotions and our spirit will receive the benefit. Go ahead and interlace your fingers, press your palms away, pull the upper arm bones into the shoulder socket, now exhale, bring your hands up towards the ceiling. Now the sit bones stay level, and as your sit bones become heavy, press your index fingers toward the ceiling to get length in the body. And then lean to your right a little bit, lengthen out through that left side, come back to center, lengthen to the left, lengthen out through the right side, come back to center. Bring your hands down. Look at them and then relace them so the other index fingers on top. Press your palms away. Pull the arm bones into the shoulder socket. On the exhale, bring your arms up. Lengthen to the right. Lengthening the left side, back to center. Lengthen to the left. Getting from that sit bone, that right sit bone, all the way up through the right heel of the hands and lean. And then press up through both fingers towards the center. Now, both sides of the body are as long as they were when they were stretching. And then as you release your hands, just bring your arms out to the side, palms up. Just take your upper arms above parallel, fold your arms in the cactus pose, and then take the thumbs toward the wall behind you, elbows forward toward your monitor here. Let the shoulder blades be on the back. Keep that and then release your hands back down to your hips. Okay, let's get started. 
I'd like to do Supta Padamustasana, supine toad and finger pose. You know that's one of my favorites if you're a regular student. You can use a blanket for under your head if you would like, or you can just go flat on the floor. I'll quickly demonstrate what we'll be doing. We're going to lie on the floor and get ourselves set up. Then we'll have both knees bent. In this case, my left knee is going to stay bent, left foot in, firmly planted on the floor and not in pose. Then I'll take the right of the strap around the right leg. So let's go and I'll talk you through that. So the left, both knees are bent, bend your elbows, press your arms onto the floor and pull the shoulder blades onto the back like they were just a moment ago in that cactus pose. Lift your hips, draw your tailbone in the direction of your feet. Then, with your left foot steady, your left leg stays vertical. It's going to want to go to the left, so it stays vertical. Take the strap around the ball of the right foot, and then just straighten that leg straight away from you. Put underdo it here at the beginning. Then press the left right heel and lift your right kneecap to straighten that leg, make, getting a lot of space from the back of the knee. And then walk your hand up the strap as you straighten the back of that leg. We're wanting to get the idea of what a straight leg with a lot of space in the back of the knee is here. So come as far as is available to you today, keeping that right leg straight. Now, take the strap in your right hand, both sides of the strap in your right hand, and take your left hand and put it on the top of your right thigh and Pull the right, the right hand toward the wall behind you. The left hand pushes into the thigh, just to give a little bit more emphasis on that action. And when we stay in a pose for more than a few seconds, the pose deepens. So we are linking out to the right leg, pulling the right foot forward, and then the left, pushing the left thigh back. I'm sorry, the right thigh back. Now, you have the strap still in the right hand. Take your left hand out to the side and palm up. Turn your right leg slightly. Keep the left foot. Keep the left knee vertical. And bring your right leg down to the right and toward the wall beyond your head. The, you may come down as far as is available to keep the leg straight and looking toward the wall behind the head. Notice your left leg, it may have gone off. So take, press with the inner left foot and keep that knee vertical. Then on the exhale, bring that leg up and release down. And recenter. If anything is shifted, go ahead and recenter. And then turn, or now settle your right leg into the floor, right foot into the floor. Bring your left knee toward you and take the strap around the left foot. Press, take, straighten the left leg. Now you're pressing through the left heel. The left knee cap is drawing toward the top of the thigh. And then the back of the knee is open. Keeping that knee open, walk your hands up the strap. And then check that right foot. Is that inner foot still pressing down? Pause here. Now, take the strap in the left hand, take your right hand and put it on the top of the left thigh. So the left thigh is moving more, the femur is moving more deeply into the hamstring and toward the wall behind you. And then you're pulling, drawing the left foot toward the wall above your head, allowing the back of that knee to open just a little bit more. And then, Release that, bring your right hand out to the side, palm up. Turn the left foot out and bring the left leg down to the side. Right leg stays steady, right outer hip presses down, right? Left leg goes toward the wall above your head. And diagonally. And watch that right foot, it's really gonna wanna press out as it did on the other side too. And then inhale, bring the leg back up. Release the strap. Roll to your right. Push yourself up to a seated position. 
and then you can set the strap aside. Okay, let's come into Adalokishvanasana, downward facing the dog. And I'd like to use the chair for this. So I'm going to put the chair leg onto the front legs, onto the mat. If you have blocks or a stool that you're using instead, we'll just use a flat block for this action. Start in, I'm going to turn around so I can actually see my student. <laughs> Okay, so we'll start in Tadasana, mountain pose, steady and strong, balanced, inside outside ball of foot, inside outside heel. Again, lifting the kneecaps from the pubic bone to the base of the sternum lengthen, from the base of the sternum to the top of the sternum lengthen, and then pull the shoulder blades onto the back like we did in that cactus pose. And then allow the body stretch to draw toward the floor. Okay, then let's take our hands onto the outer edge of the chair seat and bring our legs back into Adhanukha a downward facing dog. So as I often teach when we're on the floor, we'll press our hands forward to pull the pelvis back. The pelvis has to strongly pull back so that the legs can really take the weight here. And now the inner hands are pressing down. Pull the pelvis back. Sit bones moving toward the wall behind you. Legs are straight by lifting the kneecaps, drawing the fingers into the uh, hamstrings, pulling the thighs back. And then bend your knees, step forward, one foot, step forward, right, other foot. Now, Take your right foot under the chair seat and your left foot back again. The left foot in downward dog was facing forward, but you're going to turn it out slightly for partial tenacity, the same to the side angle pose. So now you're pressing. Now, if this is intense for you, of course, you can use the back of the chair or the seat or box. So press the left heel down, press your hands under the chair seat, and use that to straighten the legs, get the hips as even as possible. Muscles are hugging the bones here. And then you can press into the chair seat to lengthen the spine into more of a concave action. Back heel presses down, inner front foot presses down. And then bend with both knees, step forward. We're gonna Take the left foot forward now and the right foot back. So your, your right foot is turned out slightly. The outer right heel presses down, left foot turned or straight ahead and your left foot pressing down. Now, press both feet down with both kneecaps and level your hips. For most of that, us, that means pull the left hip back, right hip forward. Press your hands into the chair seat again or in the back of the chair and make your back concave. Pressing the legs down, the power of our legs is unbelievable. We root them into the earth and lift the kneecaps to access that, to help us root during this time. And then in both knees, step forward. Pause here, we'll do it one more time. Let's come back into Adho Lukashvanasana. It's always nice to come into a, a balanced pose after one leg's forward and one leg's back. And this is even both legs. So taking your feet, your hands back on the chair seat. Sometimes I call this Arva Uttanasana. But for today, we're calling it Adho Lukashvanasana. Press your hands forward, pull the thighs back. Now, Take your left foot slightly forward, but really take the right foot under this chair seat. Keeping a long stance like we did, we're repeating the same thing. So we're going to, our left heel presses down, inner right foot presses down, both kneecaps. But this time, after we get the extension of the spine, the kind of extension, you can walk forward on the chair seat and maybe come onto your forearms 
if you're on using a block, you can maybe come in a little bit more deeply into the pose, pulling the right hip away from the chair, the left hip, left hip toward the chair. And then press your come out, press your back heel down, forward, and then let's stay. Left foot forward, right foot back. Inner left foot presses down on the right heel. Now, on press your hands into the chair seat. The legs are anchored. You're lengthening your spine, lengthening the concave, and then fold forward any amount. The left hip comes back, the right hip comes forward. And then into Parashvotanasana. Second side, second time. And then press your left heel, right heel down, left heel down, come on out. Make your feet parallel with each other. Stand up. Okay, next pose. We're going to take the right foot forward, left foot back, just like we did. Let me show you, and then we'll go together. We're going to do Parva Brita Trikonasana, rotating triangle pose. So I'll lift, press, set the legs like we did, lifting kneecaps, pull the pelvis level with the ch uh, chair seat, and then come up with left hand, and come to the chair, and use this to help me lengthen my spine and then turn, lengthen the spine and turn. And finally, bring the arm up when we're ready. Let's go with that. Okay. Right foot forward. Left foot back. Keep it in first foot to not center. Right foot presses down. Outer left heel presses down. Kneecaps lift. Now pull the pelvis so it's parallel to the chair seat. Lift your left arm up. Lengthening through that left side of the body and the right side of the body. Hold forward. Take your hand onto the chair seat. And use that chair seat to lever you and lengthen the left side of the body and turn yourself to the right. Now, as you lengthen the left side of the body and turn, the, the belly, the lowest part of the belly, is just kind of stabilizing the left part of the body. And then your, belt, your stomach and ribs turn to the right, then bring up your right arm. And then think of both feet and out, make your feet parallel, set them together. Take your left foot forward, right foot back. Outer right heel presses down, inner left foot presses down. Kneecaps lift, hold the pelvis so it's parallel to the chair seat. Then bring your right arm up, fold forward and take the right hand to the chair seat. You're lengthening this right side of the body as well as twisting here. We're wanting to lengthen the side body. And then you'll turn toward the left, turn toward the left, and then we'll pull, take the left arm up, right arm, shoulders, and left arm all in a nice line. And then anchor the back foot, anchor the front foot, Release out, unwind, and come up. Auto Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Get your hands forward and lift the kneecaps, pull the thighs back. And then bend your knees, step forward. This time, we'll do the same pose. Our intention is to keep the feet grounded to root ourselves and have a, and find that power of our legs and also to find freedom in the lungs today. So one side body to lengthen in here, which is why we're using the chair so much. So I've got my feet pressed in. I'm going to lift this time I'm going to use the chair more by lifting, and then I may slide to keep this length in the left side and 
that turns into light. So you can press your whole forearm under the chair seat. All right, right foot forward, left foot back. Hips parallel to the chair seat, lift the sternum. Now, remember the length of the side body. On the exhale, fold forward, keeping right hand on the hip. Take your left hand on or forearm on the chair seat. Now, left heel presses down. Use the press of the forearm to lengthen the side body and then turn. And then once you, your arm and your shoulders, your left arm and shoulders are in alignment, a straight line, you can bring your right arm up. Left heel presses back, right femur presses back. On the exhale, release out. And we need your feet parallel to each other. Then we're hopping together. We haven't been hopping, so let's get that. We'll do that next time. Left foot forward, right foot back. Back heel presses down, inner front foot presses down. Uh, hips parallel to the edge of the mat. Now this time the right side of the body really lengthens as you fold forward and turn to your left, keeping the right side of the body. Use the chair seat to help you with that. And in the end, the right arm, the shoulders, and the left arm will all be in alignment on one plane. And then anchor the back foot. Press the little feet down. Inhale, come up. And keep the parallel seven together. Auto Mukesh Panasana. Press your hands into the chair seat. Pull the fingers back. Lengthen the side body, the right side, the left side. Take your feet a couple of inches forward. Bend your knees to, for actually want to take our whole chair onto the mat so it doesn't move. We haven't done that already. Okay, now we're going to come into Adho Svanasana as we have, and then we're going to come into a variation of Chaturanga Dandasana or the plank pose. So pressing it out, inner hands down, and drawing the shoulders, or the arm bones into the shoulder sockets and taking the shoulder blades on the back, as we did earlier in the class, and coming to plank pose. Let's go ahead and do that. Come forward into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now you want your feet slightly back, the heels slightly behind, the hips slightly. Feet are hip width apart at least. Press the inner foot down. Now, pulling the thigh back for your downward dog. Take your, keep your arms straight, come forward, and make yourself straight from the heels through the crown of the head. Hands press down, shoulder, upper arm bones pressing, pull into the shoulder sockets, and you're in plank or chaturanga dandasana. And then back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, and then inhale here, chaturanga dandasana. And then on exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then Chaturanga Dandasana. On the exhale, inhale. Shoulder now you to reset shoulders if you need to. Upper arm bones into the sockets, shoulder blades on the back, navel in. On the exhale, pull back into Adho Mukha. Oiling our shoulder joints. So let this be lovely. And then come into plank. And then Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then straight arm Chaturanga Dandasana. And then Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then go ahead and step forward. So we did about five, six, something like that. All right. 
So now, let's, the next one we're gonna put in here, you can do what we just did, where you can come into Chaturanga and move on through in the Urdhva of the Kanishvatasana, pulling the shoulder blades onto the back like that cactus pose, and drawing the chest forward toward the chair back. And then, Adho Mukha Svanasana, Chaturanga, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, Adho Mukha. Yay, let's go. Okay, so have your hands on the outside of the chair edge. Take your legs back so you're in downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Come into Chaturanga Dandasana, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Auto Pushpanasana, downward facing dog. Chaturanga Dandasana. Urdhva Pushpanasana, upward facing dog. Pressing your hands. Now keep the shoulder blades on the back. And then downward facing dog. Our intention here is to oil our hips and oil our shoulders. Okay, and then back from downward facing dog through Chaturanga and the and then Adam Vishwanasana, Chaturanga Dandasana, exhaling as you move, Urdhva Vishwanasana, and then a strong Adam Vishwanasana. And bend your knees, step forward. Tadasana. All right, an important part of keeping our health, our immune system strong are in, uh, variations of inversions. And um, so after this class, if you do headstand, shoulder stand, shishasana, salama, sarvatana, you might want to put that into the practice afterward. But for today, we'll do variations for ourselves using the blanket on the chair seat for Uttanasana with head support, forward bend with head support. So what I would like to do is, is, now some of you may want to use the back of the chair. One of the intention of this pose, before I get into it, is to uh, soften, uh, calm the mind and cool the brain. So I'm going to stand about a, two feet in front of the chair so you lift up and fold forward and do Uttanasana, remember this. And then I'll lengthen the spine again. But now I want to rest my forehead on a surface. So that could be the chair seat or the chair back, or if that's too high and it's too low, maybe a book or a block on top of your chair seat. Or if you're uh, very flexible and have a block available, Go ahead, or two, go ahead and come on to that. Tadasana. Take your hands on the top of your thighs, lift your sternum. On the exhale, fold forward. Take your hands onto the chair seat again. Onto the chair seat, keeping the back long and the arms on. Make the back comfortable. And then fold forward again. Taking the head onto the chair seat, pulling the head or onto the surface you've chosen for you to do this. And then do have your hands either on the chair seat behind your head or on blocks on the floor, so it's or on your um, legs. They need to be occupied. We will be in this pose for two minutes, which seems like a really long time, but we want to allow the body time to be in, uh, in an inversion where it can recalibrate itself. Resting the forehead allows the brain to release toward and cool it. And if you'll take your attention to the TMJ, where the the chin, uh, the earlobe is really basically that area, the jaw joint. Let that soften. Resting the head on the chair seat. 
lift your kneecaps, the legs are active, the torso is pouring over in, a, in an arc type action onto whatever support you've got happening. Arms are either on, uh, hands are either on legs or blocks or the chair behind your head. Really lifting those knee caps, pressing the heels down. Legs are, feet are evenly planted, keeping the power of those legs active. One more time, let the head be really fully supported by whatever support you're using. Soften the jaw. Now, we're going to come out, go ahead, bend the knees, press your feet down, take your hands on your hips and come on up. All right. Let's set this aside. Take two blankets. Commonly, when we do auto the Svanasana downward facing dog, we often end in the pose of the child, a wonderful forward bend action. If that's available for you, you do have something to support your head. So, knee, toes are together, knees are apart, and then you'll either use the floor or, or a blanket if you need something soft on your head. Now, go press your fingertips toward the floor, lengthen the spine again. My toes are together, my thighs are apart. I can sit on my feet. This, if this isn't available, you may need to put the blanket under your shins, which is lovely, actually. And then use the other blanket for your head. Lisa, how is that for your knee? Okay, then we'll lengthen and come into pose of the child. Now, your hands are going to come back to uh, I'm, I'm making an assumption here that you've done down facing dog more than just today's class. So your hands here are doing that same thing where they are shoulder width apart and the middle fingers are parallel. You'll just walk the hands away from you. Uh, to the straight arms and then press your hands forward, pull the sit bone or the legs, thighs onto the feet here. Now bring your, while you're doing this, I'll talk you through this. Bring your hands so that you're on your fingertips. So the palm of the hand is up in the air, your fingertips are on the floor and then walk your fingers away from you another half inch, and then take the back of the thigh toward the heel one more time to deepen the creep, the fold, and then rest your head one more time. Lengthen through the left arm, lengthen through the right arm, opening both sides of the body. And then come on to all fours. And let's turn around here. So please look for a moment. I'm going to have one blanket under my head. And the other blanket is going to be folded in half. And that's going to be under my pelvis, under my hips. So it'll look like this. This might be more fun for those of you who didn't enjoy posing the child so much. This is Urdhva of Adha Mudra Virasana. So this is Urdhva Mudra Virasana, really. I'm going to just grab my arms and come into pose the child like this. All right. Go ahead and set up. You have your head slightly supported. If your head falls back, you double the blanket. So you just want a little bit of height of the head, not much. The pelvis 
is supported by a blanket. Toes together, knees slightly apart. You can take your hands behind your thighs. If your knees are bothering you, bring your thighs to the chest. Or you can take your hands around the shin. Let the eyes be pulled into the eye sockets. Let your vision become soft. Forehead releases, jaw releases. If you're holding, grasping your forearms around the shins, switch the uh, grasp, other hand on top. and then release, and then roll to the side. I want to show you this next one. I'm going to show you from, um, I'm going to put my head here in your direction. Okay. I'm going to show this from two angles. So we'll do, Prasarata Padasana, where I'm going to have my, the strap around my feet. So my legs are as vertical as I can make them. I'll keep my feet up and then thighs drive toward that wall. Same thing that we did. I'm just going to hold this for a, a, a bit. And then we're going to come into these two. Now look, I'm going to use my whole strap here and, and reach into Anamuka uh, Uvabhisa. So I'm pressing my hands or the feet into the strap as much as possible. And some of us, it may be like this. Hopefully you have a strap that's six feet long. Okay, and I will talk you through that as well. So, I wanted you to see what that angle look is from the one hand. Go ahead and lie down. You can use a blanket under your head if you're head um, Appreciate that your neck mostly will appreciate that. If that's necessary. Bend your knees, take the strap around the ball of the foot, and then let your legs straighten up toward vertical, not past vertical. So if they're not quite at a 90 degree angle, that's all right. But you do not want to take it past a 90 degree angle. Okay, then hold, press the feet, heels toward the ceiling, the ball mounds of the feet toward the ceiling. And lengthen up. As you recall, when we did, uh, did Sutta Panamistasana, you took your arm, your hand on the opposite thigh and pressed that thigh bone into the hamstring. Can you re engage that thigh bone here as you press your heels toward the ceiling? And the strap is helping heat the upper arm bones in the shoulder sockets while supporting the legs. Now, take your legs wide and let your strap slide to the end, your hand slide to the end of the strap as you take your legs wide. Look to see that your feet are even. Press your feet into the strap and your hands will pull, creating a nice tension there. And again, the femurs moving toward the hamstrings in the amount. And if this isn't available, go less. Breathing, pressing the feet into the, to the strap. Now, if you have the buckle on one hand, hold on to the buckle side, let the strap go, and let your feet still be in this open angle position. Then take your hands and hold, place them onto the thigh bones, and let the hands hold the thighs as the thighs rest into the hands. Reach out through the heels in the amount. And now, on the exhale, bring your legs together, bend your knees, 
Roll to your right. Wow. Okay, we'll set the strap aside. And I would like to do a variation of Salamba Sarvangasana if you have the chair and the two blanket. And so what that will look like is I'll set the blankets up so that the folded edge is uh, about a foot from the edge of the mat. And then I'll bring the chair about to about here. So it's about six inches from these are Mexican blankets. So they're maybe two and a half feet deep here. Okay. When I lie down, I have space between my shoulder, the tops of the shoulders and the edge of the blanket, but my head is off the floor. I'm going to grab the chair seat with, or, I'm sorry, the front chair legs with my hands, put my feet on the back of the chair. My hands are holding me down. The upper arms press down, chair seat, and then I'll just lift up and do this variation. If you are already doing Salama Sarvangasana, shoulders uh, balance, support a full body pose, so you can go ahead and set up for that. This is a lovely variation of this pose. Very accessible. So you have the two blankets with a folded edge toward the uh, end of the mat, leaving about a foot and a half space. Your head will fit half over there. And then there, the chair seat is in front of the blankets of about another foot. And then you lie down in front of the chair and get your shoulders so they're close to the edge of the blankets. Your head is on the floor. Now, before you take the find the chair legs, you know where that is. Then let the chair legs go. Press your upper arms down into the uh, blankets. Grab the chair legs. Straighten the arms. Grab the chair legs. Press your feet under the back of the chair. Now push the feet down. Lift your hips up. Press your upper arms down. Lift your hips up. Push your feet down. Now you may roll the right arm under. Roll the left arm under, press your arms down, press your feet down. If you would like, try to take your feet onto the chair seat once you get here. That's lovely too. And that will give you a little bit more ability to lift the torso. Now you're lifting the torso, lifting the hips towards the ceiling. If this isn't available to you, if this is not going to happen, um, I'm going to come down. You stay, those people who are in shoulder stand here, stay. If this isn't available, we'll move the chair away. Keep the blankets, bend the knees, and come into such a bottom. So the exact same thing, just without the chair. So your arms are down, you'll lift your hips. In this pose, the inner feet stay strong and down when you lift the pelvis toward the ceiling. Feet press down, arms press down, pelvis lifts up. And then slowly release down. And then we you can rest your feet on the chair seat for a moment. And then your knees roll to the right. All right. So now I would like to set up for Shavasana, but I want to, we'll do a short Shavasana, about two minutes. And then we're going to come back to the chair. So please help me to bed. And we're going to come back to the chair to do Brahmari, which is a, a prana pranayama. And we'll do that. And then we'll come back into our shavas. So if you use something to support your head in order to keep your forehead higher than your chin, do that. And you might take your second blanket for the chair seat. 
and that will just be available to you when we come out, which is still be in a more quiet state. All right. So lie down and make sure that you're even from side to side. And when you lie down, you'll get the shoulder blades on the back by pressing the arms down, lifting the shoulder blades, and then placing them on the floor so they have plenty of space. Let the hips draw the sit bones from the feet, and then lengthen your legs. At first, they're working, so you press them through the heels, and then let them just relax. So you're even from side to side. Softening the outer layer to the inner layer. The skin, the muscles, the bones. Release the brow, the eyes into the head, and the jaw. Keeping your attention inward. Come back to the room, space your hand. Bend your elbows, bend your knees. Roll to your right. Push yourself up and then come to your chair. Leaving your spot for Shavasana. I'm going to sit from the side so you can see on the side. For this particular chair, I'm going to put the blanket on the back of the chair. This is up to you where you want your blanket. We're going to do drum writing, which is um, a buzzing pose. You sound like a bee in the exhale. So I'm going to use the chair back to help me get my chest and the side body open. So I'll lengthen and take the hands either on the seat in the back so that I can keep the shoulder blades um, onto the back, allowing more space in the ribs. And then I'll keep my self tall, the torso's tall, and I'll let the head drop in the amount. It's really the head drops a comfortable amount. So get yourself seated. Make sure that your feet are directly below your knees, so the legs are vertical. And then press, uh, use your hands to lift your torso, and then let the shoulder blades be supported by the back of the chair, what are the three things, whatever chair you're using, I'm not sure. And then keep the length of the torso, and then let the head drop. Okay. It'll sound like this. I'll inhale, and then exhale. Mm -hmm. And exhale. So what we'll do is about three cycles of breath. We then take a normal breath, 
and then do three cycles of Brahma. Do that at your pace. The sound of the of the B is meant to bring vibration to help you get into the body and feel the vibration of the breath as it moves through the the um, upper chest, lung area, jaw, and and even into the head. Okay. Take your seat, lift your chest, then dropping any amount, inhale, and then primary. cycle of breath. And a few more. If you feel agitated at all, just let your breath return to normal. This is meant to calm. So please keep normal breaths always available. Mm. Breaths with your head drop. Release your hands, place them on your thighs, let your head come up. And then we'll move into one more shavasana, final shavasana. You can use the chair seat for your shins if you would like. It's available as probably. That would look like this if we had to do that. With as little disturbance as possible, lie back down. Take a moment again to be sure you're even from side to side. Again, moving from the outside in, skin. Muscles, bones are fully supported and even from side to side. Soften the brow, the jaw. Let the eyes sink deeply in the head. Take the next few minutes to release with awareness, with the intention of the body being fully supported and relaxing, and the mind being fully supported the brain cool, the jaw released.
Wiggle your fingers and toes. Bend your knees, bring them toward your chest. Roll to the right and pause for a moment. And then when you're ready, use your left hand and your right forearm, push yourself up to a seated position. We'll stay on for just a moment, but with gratitude for the gift of another day. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for coming, everyone. And